Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to look at character selection. Uh, that's the most, the more specific task we're going to be doing here. But this is like a first step look at finding a way to move data between different rooms using a GameMaker Studio 2 and specifically the drag and drop environment. So I've already set up the main room. Let me just describe it out to you. So here is something I have, choose your character. This is like a menu. And of course, it's as simple as you can get. I have a red character, a green character, a yellow character, and a blue character. And you know, my kid's been playing with that red and green character quite a bit lately, if you know what I mean. And their two pals are yellow and blue pal. So, um, so what I would like to be able to do is click on one of these guys. I don't have anything more than this set up right now. Click on one of these guys and then set up a new room where that character will start the game. Because right now, as is, by default, whenever you close out a room and go to a new room in GameMaker, you lose all the data stored inside of the old room, and then you gain, you restart everything that is in the new room. So there's no way right now to send that information along and say, hey, I've selected the red character. I'd like to use that one as opposed to the yellow or the green or the blue. So yes, of course, we'd like to find a way to do that. So the controller object idea is a great way to do things, but we're going to have to introduce the idea of persistence to make this work as well. So what I did was I just have a little background menu. I have a 720p resolution. And then if you've never uh, played with object tinting before, that's probably a new one too, where you can say, I have just one object and it's white. It's basically white with a very small gray outline. And, and I, I'm not worried about centering or anything like that. And I'm using this for all four of my objects in the room, but just in the draw event, I'm, I'm taking over the draw, the, the color, the tinting, uh, let's see, draw set, what, oh shoot, what is it called? Draw set alpha color, uh, I think it's the tint. I forget exactly, it's been a while since I've done this, but you can see in here that there are nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different settings here. No, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, eight. Where's the, oh, the ninth one is this guy? The nine different settings for every sprite to be printed out. What image index, what sprite, where on the screen, how do you scale it, how do you rotate it? what kind of transparency, and then the one we care about is how, are, how am I tinting this? So my red guy is tinted red, my green guy is tinted green, and you have to do this in a draw event because it's a draw, uh, draw events or draw actions have to go in a draw event, so you can see the different colors. Okay, so that's where we're starting from, and so I can, you know, like get, I can kind of get, almost get rid of these guys in a way, but what I would like to do is set up what we've talked before about a controller object. And in this case, instead of just calling it controller, what I like to do when it comes to this, and I, a lot of my games have this, I call it game data, game underscore data. You, you're free to call it whatever you want. You always have to make sure you put it in the room. And in this case, I'm going to see how even in here, you don't, the what you see, what you get editor, it would be cool if it was like uh, Unreal or... Unity, where you can kind of see the game running before you run it, because it's really, it, it kind of takes away a little bit. But anyway, coming back, this game data object is going to go in here, but the same thing applies. This object is just like every other object, in that when it goes from room to room, it dies, you know, and it is destroyed when this main menu, or room one, let me just call it main menu here, main menu room, since we are going to be transferring between rooms. When this main menu removes over, this object is destroyed. So there's a little clicky box here called persistent. And you can make it invisible if you want, it doesn't much matter. But what persistent means is when I go from room to room, this object stays with us. It stays alive. And that's exactly what we want to have happen. We, when we go from room to room, I want to store data in there. And in this case, I'm going to create an event. And I'm just going to call it, oh, i got to pull up my variable again. And I'm just going to say, you know, which character, oops, well, which, I'll call it picked. Which character was picked, and I'm just going to set it a value, and I can just set it maybe a negative one to indicate that negative one is uh, unpicked. 
I like to use the keyword no one sometimes. That is a keyword. I think it's negative three or something in Game Maker. Just no, it just because it, it just sounds cool, right? No one is picked because right now when the game starts out, you didn't click on anybody at all. And so what I can do just to kind of show it off here is just put a draw event for this guy. I can, I'll, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll just use draw, and then I'll do draw text, and uh, let me find draw text here, draw value, and I go, okay, selected or picked, and this is just to show you it's working kind of thing, and then I'll use the variable called picked, and then I'll set it, it I'll set it at 5.5, five. so it'll go in the upper, 5.5, up five. it'll go in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and you should see picked as a negative one there, right? It is not showing it. Hold on, let's see. That's interesting. Game data picked. Maybe just the cut. Maybe I picked the bad color. Let's see if I could adjust the color here. Draw set. Draw color. Make it white. Oh, still not coming up. How odd. What did I do wrong? Did I not? Did I not put it in the room? There it is. Oh, I made it invisible. Duh. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't usually click with that. I don't usually I usually don't play with that thing for good for obvious reasons there, just in case I need it for development mode stuff. So that oh, minus four. No one is a minus four. So you can see picked is a minus four. And so now what I want to do is go ahead and change this data. So when I'm in the red guy and I do a left clicked mouse left pressed, I what I can say here is what I want to do is change the variable inside of game data, the picked object, and I'll make it zero. Zero is red guy, otherwise known as the M man. Okay, so picked is minus four. Now picked is zero, and I don't have any of the, just to show that it was working that I could click on it. So now I hope I can copy this thing out without breaking everything. Nope. I don't know. Let's see. Let's let's see what happens now. With the green guy, see if it works. One zero one zero one. Fair enough. Okay, now let's try it with yellow guy. Get a two and blue guy. Make it a three. Try that out now. Okay, negative four, zero, one, two, three, and every time I click, it's good to go. Okay, so now when I do something like this, and now I'm just going to add into this, uh, oh shoot, because I don't have anything to say go to, like play the game or anything like that. So how about, just to keep it simple now, how about I add a an event here in just the, uh, just pick, I'm, again, this is just kind of a hacky thing. But what if I pr press the space bar, and when I press the space bar, I say, okay, let's go to the gameplay room. And I don't have a gameplay room right now, so let me create that. Oops, a room. Get a room, guy. Okay, gameplay room. I'm not going to do anything fancy in it, but just, just to have it available right now, let me just make it the same size, the 720p. And so now, which object was I in? Playing the blue guy, it doesn't matter what. So now when I press the space bar, I am going to do a room go to, right? I'm going to change rooms. Say, okay, go to the gameplay room. Let's see what happens now. I have to press space bar though. Okay, so picked, I click, click, click. And I click, picked this too. I hit spacebar, and now you can see this object made it over. If I, if all I have to do over here in the game data object is unclick the persistence, and it'll be like everything else, like I was describing before. But I just want to show you for proof. I click, I click, I click, and the object doesn't come along. There's nothing being drawn. The object is destroyed and never brought back. But now this object survives. And now you can see where to go with this. The, you know, if my picked value is one and I go to the next room, then I can do whatever I need to do in this case. So finally here, let's just set that up, that one little case here 
of just setting up the different object color and then you're good to go. Okay, so for this to happen, just to kind of keep it simple here, I'm going to need to create four different objects, or actually five different objects, as you can imagine, and I can duplicate this most of the time here. I'm going to call my little, I'm going to call them Hero Red, and again, I'm going to give all of them this, that same sprite, and then we're going to hint it just to prove it here in a minute. Hero Red, uh, duplicate, where's duplicate? There it is. Hero Green. And then hero yellow and hero blue. Oops, I didn't mean to create group. Sorry. Duplicate. Hero blue. And I'm just going to create one called hero. Just, just an overarching hero. Create object hero. Okay, and I'm going to make it the same thing here and that's what I'm gonna put in the room in the gameplay room I'm gonna put hero in here where did oh, I thought I added color sorry give me one second thought I did that there we go so now you can see there's a hero it's a white colored hero there's nothing in it none of these are do anything right now let's see I press I press spacebar I go over okay fair enough um, okay so everything works so up oh, wait was it there I didn't even see. I didn't look too hard did I put it in the room I think I did there we go. There, okay, so there is my player. I picked a two. So what I would like to be able to do then is to basically just go ahead and set things up. So let me let me pull down from over here. Let me let me steal this draw event and put this back in for everybody here. Hero red paste save make it red. Take the green paste it in. Save it. Make it green. Doesn't have to be perfect. For now, um, paste it in my yellow guy, change the yellow coloring, and then finally my blue guy, and then, okay, good to go. So now all there's left to do here in the, in this, in this, uh, in, in the gameplay part of this is when I get to the hero, and I have a create event here, I just can just, I can just pull and figure out what to do here and say and basically just use an if check and just say if my game data that object the object is picked is equal to zero then I can change object types I can change into Mario red guy ay 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 I don't want to get into trouble right okay so I can say change into the red guy let's see about this Okay, so let's see. I pick, let's just say I pick the green guy and I hit spacebar and he's still white. Okay. Again, I wish it would start it over here. I mean, okay, I press Mario, I press space, and there it is. So that's all there really is to it. So now I just have to kind of copy paste this and kind of make sure it goes in the right places. And I'm not going to use else, I'm not going to complicate the drag and drop. It's horrible for this these kind of things because you're gonna if 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 but if the data is one then I'm gonna be oh did I say menu red I meant oh wait a minute change instance to hero red sorry about that guys play hero red and then change this into a uh, gameplay hero gr hero green and then copy this again and just to make sure you got this right, that's why this is over here in a little bit more of English. And it's hard to read sometimes, but this is indented. So this is, if this is true, do this. If this is true, do that. If this is true, do that. I just haven't fixed this up yet to say, like, if it's a two, then make this a yellow guy. And then just to finalize everything here, if it's a three, then use the blue guy. And then I'm not even going to worry just because it's just an example for you guys. I'm not even going to worry what happens if you don't select anybody. Obviously, you would handle that. Oops, you would handle that differently if that was the case here. So hero red, hero green, hero yellow, hero blue of value 0, 1, 2, and 3. So there's uh, five different ways to test this, right?
So if it's negative four and I press spacebar, it gives me the white screen or the white guy because because it just it didn't change. And this is an error state. Don't get me wrong, that should never happen, but this is a simple example. So now to come up here just to do this four more times over, I pick the red guy and I press spacebar and I get my red guy. Three more times to go. But I'm not anticipating any issues here. And I move this over and I press, click here and I press space and there's my green guy. Maybe I should have a, yeah, too late now to have a button that restarts the game just to do it. That's okay. I click my yellow guy. I go to run and there he is. And then to finish up. Make it blue. And there he is. So what I, what's cool about this though, I have all this, the dev mode stuff, but what I can do now, because I say, I, most times I don't go ahead and do this, but that uh, game data object, you can make it invisible now, because I have that draw in there. But now, just because it's invisible doesn't mean it's not in my room. So now, even though it doesn't read anything up here, everything works exactly the same. It's hard, it's hard to tell that you actually clicked on it, but if I press spacebar, you can see that I've clicked on the yellow guy. And now everything else is just artwork and, uh, you know, everything in between when it gets to how, how, how complicated do you want your menu to look and feel. But that's, that covers pretty much everything, not just creation of characters, but everything you need to know to keep track of data as you go from, as you pretty much go around your game from room to room to room. This game data object can get very complicated with the stuff that you're setting up, picked as no one. Hit points is this, what file, what this, what that. But everything you can do through this one, this globe, basically a global persistent object. And as long as you never destroy it, and you always make sure you put it in the first room of your game, it will always be there for you. Almost like a static object in, uh, you know, when we discuss that in other languages, you know, that aren't, and other IDEs that aren't game maker. So that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover in this video about just getting getting a character control screen going or character uh, character pick screen choose choose screen and to get data between places that doesn't this doesn't work with files this doesn't work with a save system so as you're noticing every time i turn the game off and turn it back on it doesn't remember any of the previous settings that's for another time but uh but but basically time to time as i go from room to room everything's working out so as always, thanks for sticking it out with me. If you have any questions or concerns or things you'd like me to advance, you know, make this a little more complicated for so you understand what's going on, uh, just uh, send an email to swordb at cod.edu, or, of course, you can comment here on YouTube below. So moving on to bigger and better things. Plenty of other videos if you want to watch. Uh, making plenty of videos. Today's a busy day for me making videos for this course. So uh, thanks for sticking it out. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. See you next time.